Sandra Portman. Warmly welcome to the Biohacker Summit. We're here on the live stream today. You've been talking about uh, biohacking women. Yeah. That's a relatively new topic, I think, in the last few years. I maybe just last year started to hear more about that. What is special about biohacking women? Uh, well, even though the approach is different. So biohacking, the term is very masculine. It has this um, um, idea of pushing yourselves, bettering, making yourself stronger, faster, like these really masculine traits. Mm. And women tend to be more attracted to uh, gentler, softer ways of biohacking, like, for example, yoga or mindfulness. So, yeah, I think that is the, the different angle of biohacking. Do you have some tips of what you recommend, like for someone who doesn't know anything about biohacking or is just getting started, what would be the most important things to try? If we're talking about women, I would definitely say that getting in tune with your cycle and your hormones would be really a good way to start. Because I feel women are pretty much naturally even like biohackers. They have learned to listen to their bodies a bit, I would say a bit better than men, just because we have this cycle. So yeah, I would start there, definitely. Do you notice it by writing it down or what's like the way to become aware? Yeah, you can just use your calendar. And of course, nowadays we have cool apps where you can measure and put pretty much all the data in. And then are there some apps that you recommend for that or that you've tried or seen? I have tried a couple, but actually at the moment I'm not using any because I, after you kind of learn your cycle, you don't need, need to that tool. It any. Yeah. Yeah. But in the beginning phase, it's, it's really useful. It's helpful, yeah. Yeah. So notice your cycles. What do you do next with that information? <laughs> <laughs> well, depending, what do you notice? Like, definitely, if you notice that there is some PMS on, or then there's a lot of cramps during the periods, or if you get this idea or feeling that, ah, oh, there might be imbalance, maybe have your hormones checked. Make sure that they are balanced, they're all good. And, yeah, just, um, yeah, depending on the situation, first take notes and then, then take action. Are hormonal imbalances mostly caused by stress or the environment or what's the, what do you see in your work? Like what's the main? Well, nowadays balance? with women, it, it's definitely, often it's stress, but it's often also our gut health. Okay. So if there has been some issues with the gut, that might also affect our hormones in the long run. So those are the two common themes that women come with like yeah they've noticed that their hormones are like imbalanced and then we go back in the timeline and we, we can see that okay you had a gun infection or you had a dysbiosis and it was never resolved and mm. and that's where the issue came from i think we hear a lot about hormones but do you have some examples of like what are symptoms when your hormones are not balanced because i think if you've been living your whole life almost unaware and with imbalance it's hard to even know like what does health actually look like true that's a good good point well yeah basically yeah if your hormones are balanced you should be happy and healthy and full of energy but then if not then you might have anxiety for no reason i mean of course, anxiety for a reason is, is um, normal, but then if you have anxiety without any reason or um, you suffer from uh, sleeplessness, so insomnia, you can't sleep, or if you have terrible cramps or terrible PMS, that is not part of the normal hormonal cycle. Can you give an example of uh, if you have insomnia, for example, what could be the hormonal imbalance over there? Um, that might be due to estrogen dominance or, or then again, um, too little of progestin. So that usually, progestin is our hormone that makes us calm, peaceful, relaxed, able to just enjoy and be in the moment. So they might be, yeah, in balance there. Assuming that that's a problem most of the society has, what's a good hack for balancing that out? 
Well, if it's about, the, yeah, why do you have that imbalance? It might be due to too much estrogen. So, of course, making sure that you are getting rid of the estrogen. So that might be making sure that your bowels move regularly, making sure that your liver is functioning, supporting liver with the nutrition, with good fats, uh, vegetables, maybe even cleansing diets, and um, yeah, just um, detoxing better can be a good way to get rid of the excess estrogen. What are the best ways to detox? Oh, best ways? Well, that depends. Like, where is the trigger? Because if it's the liver, of course, then you should support the liver. But then, if if it's like that, you are not. Um, going to the toilet often enough, then make sure your gut health is perfect. What about saunas and that whole? Oh yeah, that is actually a good way too. Like sweating, exercising, going out. Yeah, those are also very good tools. Do you, if, if you would want people to know like the most important things they need to know, because I guess all of this balancing hormones and biohacking women, it's really to the end goal of our main theme, which is resilience and happiness. And, you yeah. know, these are all small steps there. Is it relaxing, exercising, meditating? What, is, what, it, what do you think people should start with? Um, well, women in general at the moment, I find like everyone... Uh, are dealing with stress. During this time, I think everyone has faced a little bit of stress. I would start with that, just finding the tools for managing stress, uh, even creating some kind of um, toolkit for self-care things that you can do every single day. It can be a bath, it can be walk in the nature, it can be a cup of tea. But just something nice you do every single day that relaxes you and allows you to take a breath. Mm. That's a great way to, once you're aware of what's going on, then to take an actionable step. To yeah, yeah. Just, is it mostly just listening to your body and being in touch? Yeah, this, this is what I find like with women, uh, we are not that drawn to tech and technology and all these tools and gadgets, which are fine, of course. But for women, I think it's more important to go inwards and really listen to our bodies and really learn to be intuitive with our eating habits, with the exercise, mm-hmm. um, our self-love, care, like everything, really. And I guess sleep again comes up in that whole thing. That True. Yeah. If you're sleeping well, <laughs> it yeah. fixes a lot of True. imbalance. That's yeah. great. Thank you so much for being with us here at the Biohacker Summit and for bringing up this important topic that we all need to be more aware of for sure. So thank you. Thank you, Sandra. (laughs)